Good morning. Dear saints, brethren, church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, and whomever ye may be who might click on this. Hello. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read along with me. You know why you want to read along with me? Because if you read, well, you need to search the scriptures daily, whether these things are so, okay? Number one. But number two, I make mistakes. Okay, I make mistakes. So it would behoove you to follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Okay? <laughs> As he has been. The Prince of Darkness. <laughs> what? Satan gave Ozzy Osbourne a song where it was, I'm going through changes. Changes. The Shemitic uh, Chinese have a book uh, called the Book of Changes. Changes. Change life gospel, right? Changed life gospel. Hmm. I'm, I'm very sus of that. By the way, you older guys uh, and ladies, uh, sus is short for suspect. Okay, I'm very sus of that phrase now. Why? Why? Well, we're going to address that in this video, but let me let me just put it to you uh, bluntly, as uh, we have discussed before. What is the agent or provocateur that instigates change? Hmm? Is the change the result of being made a new creature, Christian? Or because you are following a guideline without any true change, which comes from being a new? Creature, okay. Uh, the the you know did your life change? Did your life change? Did your life change? Do you have a changed life? Now now hey, if the Lord Jesus Christ saves you, okay, you got God the Father dwelling in you, okay. You go the way He is elected, the way He is called, okay, <laughs> um, and He dwells within you. Things are going to change. But they are a result of being a new creature, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Way too many of you Christians, you King James Bible Christians, way too many of you Christians have a change. But not because you are a new creature. The book of James, uh, it's going to be me, all right? Um, if you're lost and you want to watch this, please, please, I encourage you to. But um, it's going to be a big one for you. So let's go. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 8. Incidentally, the entirety of Scripture is written for you. All things were written that were written for time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly uh, furnished unto all good works. Okay? The entirety of Scripture is written for you. Yes. But it is not all written individually to you. Okay? At the end of the day, dear friend. And here I'm I hope I make a, I hope I make you Christians angry. 
This is a Jewish book. A Hebraic Jewish book. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Which has things in it for us Gentiles, you know. But it is a Jewish book. The Hebraic Jewish book. See, you, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, son. You don't do that. You're, you're like, uh, uh, what's that guy? Nate Prater <laughs> guy over there. Okay. We should have addressed in the last video. James chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 8. Who is the book of James written to? Specifically to. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes of Israel. Hebraic Jews, even today, will make mention that, well, the twelve tribes are not distinguished today. But right here they are. That's because the book of James doctrinally is primarily written for the Hebraic Jewish people for the time of Jacob's trouble, which happens after this dispensation, which is uh, the time of the Gentiles, meaning that we Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Hebraic Jew. Okay? I know the time of the Gentiles appears in the book of Revelation. I get that. Okay? But the mystery that us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? All right? So the book of James you get right away is written to the Hebraic Jews. It's written for us all today. Yes, it is. For instruction and in righteousness. And yes, there are some doctrine, doctrine in here that that is for us as well. But in its whole, in its entirety. Okay? The book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews for the time of Jacob's trouble. Or else you'd be like these Christians who like to say that James chapter 2, which will be... Uh, there will be a lot of uh, links in the description box for you for if you have questions about these things. I know most of you Christians, a lot of stuff that you're going to hear, it's like you think that's heresy. No, no, you, you guys are the heretics. You Christians are being made into heretics by the Jesuit-trained cemeterian pastors in your phallus house buildings, okay? All right, that's just the way it is. But the book of James is written to the Hebraic Jews for the time of Jacob's trouble. But it's for us today. Does that make sense? I hope so. My brethren, now this is the James who had the us and them problem He's, he's our brother, he's in heaven, which is uh, talked about, which we talk about in Acts chapter 21, okay, which uh, I'll put it in the description box for you, okay? My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh <laughs> patience. I know, I'm not a doctor, neither are you. You might be. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, I believe we have proved what wisdom actually is according to Scripture. It's the fear of the Lord. Okay? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. And abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Hold your place. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hmm. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse 6 in James chapter 1. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth, is like a wave of the sea, 
driven with the wind and toss. Driven with the wind. We're going to touch on this verse in a second. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Why? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable. Look at verse 6. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, wishy-washy. Here and there. You're, you're one day you believe the truth and rightly dividing, next thing you believe, just believe and receive. You're up and down, up and down, up and down. What's wrong with you, brother? Yes, I'm talking to you, brother. I love you. Some reason I can't get a hold of you. I wonder why. What's wrong? This goes to any of you. That one day you're you're rightly dividing the word of truth, and the next day it's like, oh, just believe and receive, and you go betwixt two opinions. Genesis forty nine. Genesis forty nine. Genesis means the beginning, by the way. Genesis 49, verses 3 and 4. Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, Israel. He was the firstborn. But Reuben had a problem. And the right to the firstborn was given on to another because Reuben, I don't think, was the sh sharpest knife in the drawer. Reuben knew what was supposed to be done right, but he had problems. He wavered. He was wavering. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defiledest thou it. He went up to my couch. Yes. He lay with one of his father's concubines. He and his father had the same womb. No. No, that's, that's bad bad. Okay. But the unstable as water. Unstable as water. Up and down, up and down. Ever seen any of these videos on the, um, oh, oh, the, the, not the English channel. Oh, oh, it's, it's, it, it eludes me. It's like one of the, it's near you, you guys in England, um, that, like, in, in, it's not the English sea. Oh, I can't remember it, but it's considered like one of the most dangerous seas on the earth. And you see some of these videos, unstable like water, and these big ships just getting flooded, and these guys like flying into the air and going back and forth, and they get paid a lot of money. They're crazy, <laughs> but unstable like water. Ephesians chapter 4, unstable. 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 Why is someone unstable? Ephesians 4, verses 13 on to verse 16. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, Perfect does not mean sinlessly perfect in this context. It means your heart is perfect with the Lord. We make mistakes every day. We're going to read this today. This is going to be a big video. Uh, just man fall seven times and rise up again, but the wicked fall into mischief. Okay? Okay? Hey, remember, Mr. Fig, lost people like yourself fall away. Okay? <laughs> Bless your heart. All right, let's continue. That we henceforth be no more children, children, 
Is it, is it, yeah, I mean, I've been looking at some of these Christian like channels and their comment sections, and the children don't grow up. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay lie in wait to deceive. It, it, it's full of wonder why a brother would want to purposely regurgitate Rebuild a bridge with people who he knows, who you know are poisonous to your faith, and yet you still keep going back to that. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Okay? I don't. But, speaking the truth in love, in love, I love you, and I'm going to warn you about the cliff you're about to dive off of head first. Christianity hates you. It's like, don't worry, God loves you. Okay? See, love is warning you of the danger. Hate is patting you on the back while you go face first towards the danger. Okay? All right? Simply put. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself and love. Saints, unfortunately, can disagree. Why? Because flesh gets in the way every time. Well, we'll look at that as well. But at the end of the day, a saint is a saint, is a brother, is a sister. But see, a Christian and a saint. <laughs> it's like fire and water. They don't get along. Okay? All right, James chapter 3 now. James chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love. And then not to be carried about with every wind of doctrine. Okay? And an unstable man, uh, uh, a double-minded man, is unstable in all his ways. It says so right there in verse 8. In James chapter 1, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But see, are you asking for the fear of the Lord? Or are you confusing wisdom there with knowledge? Knowledge is the result of wisdom, dear friend. Are you asking for the fear of the Lord? He'll give it to you. Oh, trust me. Or are you just a asking to know something rather than to know someone? James 3, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Hey, 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 grafted into hell. You see that verse? You need to take that seriously there, boy, with your veiled Calvinism. You, you, those of you fake people out there, you infiltrators and you devils, teaching things that you ought not, thinking, you know, giving off this facade that you're a somebody, um, you, you really need to take that verse seriously. You really do. It's so one of the reasons why someone who is kind of reluctant to be in this position uh, because of that. And I don't blame you, brother. I don't. Because, you know, every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. And I personally, Brad Paul Alvinshine, am going to give an account 
the Lord for everything I've ever said to you. So when a brother, a brother, comes, Brad, let's talk. I think you got something wrong. Okay. All right, brother. Let's go. Come on. Show me. Please. Show me. Show me. Let, let's go. Okay. So, oh, boy. Make a correction. If not, it's like, okay then. Okay. Thank you, though, for bringing it to my attention at the least. Okay. See, a lot of there's there is no fear of God before their eyes. The fraudulent, there is no fear of God before their eyes. They have no fear of God. It's the st stupidity of teaching that you know just believe and receive, not rightly dividing the word of truth. You you Jesuit trained cemeterians, yea, hath God said, <laughs> you you're putting yourself in the position to be a master, you know, to teach people, and you have no fear of God when you're teaching contrary to the truth. I need to rethink some things. Verse 2. For in many things we offend all. Hi. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man perfect man. And to my knowledge, there was only one truly perfect man. Give you 50 guesses who that was. And it isn't you. And, also, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven by fierce winds. Fierce winds. Every wind of doctrine. Mm. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter of little fire can live. See the fake, the fraudulent, the devils. Oh, uh, hello. The fake, the fraudulent, and the devils. They deceive with their words. They have great swelling words and they that they can drive people with their fierce winds of their false doctrines, professing themselves to be something that they are not. Hence, when people make the decision to fall for that because it, it, it gratifies the flesh, it itches and tickles the ears there, you know, up and down, up and down, unstable as water. What is, what is, what is the foundation? See, that shows to at least me and other brethren who have been walking with the Lord for a little while. That shows the foundation. A uh, foundation built on sand will sink. Foundation built on the rock, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, not Peter, will stand. Withstand. Okay? Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. If you got something like this, you might want to use it. We're going to have a little light expository here. Proverbs 18, verses 14 on to 21. Proverbs 18. The spirit, am I making the right guess? The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. The spirit of man. Now, obviously, the spirit of man is not the spirit of the Lord. It's not a capital S at all. Spirit of man. Man was made a living soul. You and I are spirit, soul, and body. Spirit of man. Man is of the earth. Earthy. Is he not? Oh, no, that's right. That's right. You evolutionist idiots. 
Yeah, you're a piece of snot. You evolved from a monkey, which came from a sniveling piece of snot out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> Um, look, by the way, dude, if you're offended that I make reference to people who are so deceived as if they're on drugs, um, take offense, take a gate. Okay? All right? Get, come on now. Come on. You get offended that I make a drug reference to these guys who are deceived by their own whatever as if they're on drugs with me making the comment of roll you up another one? Uh, dude, come on. Come on. Are you a little deceived yourself? I think so. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Anyway. He, okay, the spirit of man, spirit of man, will sustain his infirmity. Man, justifying whatever he wants. But a wounded spirit who can bear a wounded spirit? That's what we're going. To. Acts chapter two. Let's let's give a example. Acts chapter two about a wounded spirit. You ever been wounded in your spirit? Many people have. And Acts chapter two, verses thirty-six on to verse thirty-seven. And you wicked Pentecostal Catholics. It was like, hey, Acts two thirty-eight. Uh, you you guys who are doing. Baptism, baptism, water baptism is not required for salvation. Okay, there will be a link for you in the description box if you do not want to watch that or consider the scriptures, then you can go to hell and get wet. Okay, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verses 36 on to verse 37. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, you're going to notice something. But see, the heart is inside the flesh. And the heart can also dictate what comes of our spirit. The Spirit of God dwells within us who are saved, okay? But remember, the Lord does not do anything by coercion, okay? You've got to make the right choices. You're going to know something. Look at this. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Contrast, Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 54. Stephen, before the elite, pharisaical, tradition, man, yo ho ho, buddy, and scripture, Pharisee, Catholic, okay, tradition, scripture, okay, ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and in ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one, all capital letters, not all uh, capital J, capital O, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But Brad, that's talking about the heart. Yes, it is. Psalm 51 now. Psalm 51. If your heart has been pricked or cut, that's going to affect your spirit. Yeah, you haven't figured that one out yet, huh? What are you, two? <laughs> what are you, two years old? <laughs> Sucking on your thumb? Huh? <laughs> Come on now. Come on now, man. See, some of y'all Christians really need to grow up. 
quit being little children tossed around by every uh, wind of doctrine by the slight of Christians. Sleazy believists. Okay? Psalm 51, verses 1 on to verse 4. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be just, that thou mightest be justified. Don't miss that. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. How does God judge us today? <laughs> Scripture. Okay? Psalm 102. Yes, Psalm 102. Psalm 102, verses 1 on to verse 11. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke. My bones are burned as an hearth. My! You getting the, you getting the, um, the you getting this? My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. Do you think um, that whoever wrote this psalm, Psalm 102, that his spirit was also con uh, downcast, or cast down, I should say? Hmm? What do you think? My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I, 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 me, me, me. I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an owl in the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are sw and they that are mad, insane against me, are sworn against me, like the Jesuit order and those coadjutors who serve and work for the Vatican. For I have eaten ashes like bread, mingled my drink with weeping, because of. Thine, now, okay, now, now he's starting to turn a little bit. Because of thine, he's turning here. But the official turn does not come yet. Because of thine indignation and thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up. And cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth. I am withered like grass. The grass grows up and it withers with the change of the season. You are born 70, 80, maybe even 90, maybe even 100. If you're lucky and you try really, really hard, maybe, oh, you might even reach over a little, uh, over 100, maybe a little. But see, in light of eternity, that's a day to day. That's nothing. So, go back to Psalm 51, verses 16 on to verse 19. Psalm 51, verse 16 on to verse 19. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God 
our broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Broken. If something's broken, you can kind of call it wounded. I know they're two different things. I know. You can be wounded and not broken, and you can be broken and not wounded. Eh. Mm. O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Psalm 102, verse 12. But thou, O Lord, don't miss that. that that's the official, that's when Psalm 102, uh, 102 changes. Because from verses 1 to verse 11, as I enunciated purposely, the personal pronouns, I, 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 me, 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 mine, okay, but thou, O Lord, thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever in thy remembrance unto all generations. Verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set <laughs> time is come. Set Thou, Lord. Many people, many Christians, will experience a level of brokenness, but they won't go over that edge of hopelessness. But they maintain a bit of self-hope that they can do better. And they, and you got to watch it with some of these guys because before they go over that edge of hopelessness, they will gratify themselves by debasing themselves. Self-debasement can be a form of self-gratification. I've run into this with several people, many actually, where it's like, I'm so bad, I'm beyond salvation, I'm so bad, nothing can help me, I just got to do better. Good luck with that. See, a lot of people will get to that edge, but they won't go over. Won't go over the edge. And see, Christianity comes can come right when you're at that edge and pull you back with, you're not a bad person. God loves you. Hey, there must be something special about you because God loves you unconditionally. Huh? <laughs> God so loved that he gave. See, the minute you start thinking that you are not are above the dirt that you came from, look at the Christians online here. Need I say more? Proverbs 18, picking up at verse 15. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge. And remember, knowledge is the result of wisdom. What wisdom? What wisdom? The spirit of man? Man is of the earth, earthly, sensual, devilish, huh? Huh? But a wounded spirit, wounded spirit, one that has been broken, huh? and driven over that edge, I must say. It's like I said, I have encountered many Christians that have indeed been broken. But they find themselves a niche. They find themselves an ite. Who through fleshly means pushes them back. Pushes them back from going over and being totally hopeless. Because hey, if they push them back then hey, there's something that I can still do. 
The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise, there is the tie-in, seeketh knowledge. Wise, equated with wisdom. Are you wise in the ways of the world, like so many are? Or wise in the way of the Lord through wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord? A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. Verse 17. He that is first in his own cause, seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. Ah. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just. I just believed. Oh, yeah, we're, no, we ain't dropping this at all. This needs to be hammered. Because it's growing. It's not going away. And when you've got people who claim to be of us Boasting their little niche, their little click. I just believe I went to the church of Christ. <laughs> I'm elect. I, I've achieved fullness through myself. Whatever. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Just one verse to start in Proverbs 14. Verse, what did what, what, you do there? What did you do there? Okay. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way, that, way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Verses 1 and verse 6. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. The king's heart. <laughs> wow, you think you're your own God, right? I know this is talking about, I know, I know. We're looking at this for instruction and in righteousness, okay? Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the heart. You believe it, you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. Your heart is desperately wicked. Okay? God knows your heart, yeah. He knows that it's deceitful and desperately wicked. And that if you trust in your heart, you're a fool. Fool says in his heart there is no God. Okay? Alright? So, what might seem right on you, Lord, ponder the hearts. Are you seeking to find a justification for yourself? Or that the Lord may be justified when he speaketh? See, that, that's the problem. That, and that's what makes the sleazy believers so dangerous to you people. Because that's self-justification, not justification of the Lord. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. How many of you will give up anything if you know that if you can do something to be right with God, you will? Just believe and receive, right? Justice and judgment. When He is just when He speaks. You're not good. You can't save yourself. Judgment. Judgment. Examine yourself daily. Judge yourself by the perfect standard. Do you do that? See, I can say that to you because I do that every day. Do you? No, you guys dispute it. Go to the Greek. Don't get me started on that. And see, another thing about the Greek it will be in uh, Monday's video, which will be in the description box for you. Um, again, when someone goes to the Greek, number one, which Greek? Always, always throw that at them, people. Always. They're also looking to move, be unstable, justify something of themselves. It's kind of like the people that are like, you don't judge me. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And verse 4. 
and high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. God knows my heart. I'm saved because I just believe. The thoughts of the diligent and he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him tend only to plenteousness. You can't exhaust the word of God. You can't. And if you are one of those who think you can, then it's like these guys is like, well, the uh, quote, Bible silent on No, it isn't. If the as you say, not me, quoting, if the Bible is silent on something, is it sufficient? Is it sufficient? And it's interesting that someone will say that always to justify something that can be disproven as heresy onto one who is holding on to it with a death, death grip. <laughs> the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. But everyone that is hasty would want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity. There's that toss to and fro of them that seek. Death. Mm. Mm. The wages of sin is death. Proverbs 14, verses 20 on the verse 25. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Snares of death. The wages of sin is death. First Timothy. Oh, where is that? First Timothy. No, Second Timothy. Second Timothy. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, hmm. verses 25 and 26. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, you deny the true gospel, you deny rightly dividing the word of truth, which is a cause from 90% of the problem, that you don't do it. You're opposing yourself. You're, you're your own worst enemy when you're, I'm going to be blunt with you, you're an idiot if you're an easy believist. Because you save yourself. You're an idiot if you subscribe to one of these satanic daughters of the whore with you at its center. You're opposing yourself. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. God loves you. Just believe in see. You got to do the sacraments. You got to do something, a visual stimuli, so you can pat yourself on the back. Back to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Verses. What was I reading? <laughs> what was I reading? Hmm. Ah, I was reading in the wrong place. But, excuse, excuse me, but that worked, okay? <laughs> I was reading in the wrong place. Excuse me, sorry. See, I make mistakes. I make mistakes. 
But apparently, verses 25, uh, verses 26 and 27, the fear of the Lord, wisdom, is in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Now let's read verses 20 under verse 25. Th thank you. <laughs> thank you. See? See, you got to follow along. That wasn't planned. <laughs> the poor is hated even of his own neighbor. But the rich hath many friends. Rich in what? Rich in the world? He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth. Well, who is my neighbor? Right? But he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips tendeth to penury. Labor. Study to shoot thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. You know, study is a form of self-labor. Self-labor, yeah. Study to shoot thyself approved unto God. A workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. See, if you don't study the scripture, if you don't rightly divide it, God's ashamed of you. And when you got some half-wit idiot telling you that it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden on to the kingdom of heaven, they're not studying the word of God. They're not rightly dividing. The crown of the wise is their riches. And the blood of Jesus Christ is precious. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who dwells in the saint. But the foolishness of fools is folly. A true witness delivereth souls. But a deceitful witness speaketh lies. So see, we're reading that 26 and 27 like that. <laughs> that worked. But the thing about the poor, the thing about the poor, go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. I'm a man like you. See, I, I make mistakes. Thankfully, the Lord used that, though. <laughs> you know, thankfully, praise the Lord. Okay? The, the, praise the Lord. That worked. But see, like I said, you gotta read along. Okay? Luke chapter 6, verses 20, on to verse 26. Now, there are those of you out there who might think, be cute. And it's like, well, that's the Sermon on the Mount. That's a kind. No, this isn't. The setting where our Lord spake this was not on the Mount of Olives. Hence, it was a different time and at a different place within history, year ministry. Okay. This is not the Sermon on the Mount. This is not a rehashing of the Sermon on the Mount. Why? Because, and he lift up his eyes, and, uh, his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Spiritual. Spiritual. Kingdom of God is mentioned in this Sermon on the Mount in contrast to the kingdom of heaven. So, see, they're not the same. They are two different things. There are incidences within context that the kingdom of God could be a reference onto the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. But majority of the time, it's a re reference onto the spiritual. Okay? Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, saint. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Like they do to us saints. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich. 
for ye have received your consolation. I can tell them from these people, man, <laughs> have a great life, dude. Like that guy over there, you Christians, you easy believe. All oh, you fake, all oh, you fraudulent, you fraudulent King James Bible believing Christians. Have a, I have a great life, dude. Enjoy your life. Live it up, buddy. Hey, roll up another one. Go ahead. Just have the best life you can. Ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Billy Goat Graham. Everybody liked Billy Goat Graham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just, just one example. Mr. Gandhi. Everybody loved Gandhi, right? He was a hero. <laughs> yeah. And you can and you can go on and on and on and on. Confucius. He was a little confused with every pun intended. Confucius. Yeah. Everybody loved Confucius, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beware. Back to Psalm 18, verse 18. The lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. What verse? The lot. You know, like casting dice or something like that. The lot. Not the children of lot, by the way. Okay? But the lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. Parteth! Distinction. Distinction. There is a distinction between a Christian and a saint. But see, Christianity wants that blurred. And as for me, personally, I'm all about that distinction. Have to be. In these days. Okay? But 2 Timothy chapter 2, just one verse. Not 1 Timothy, Brad. 2 Timothy chapter 2, one verse, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. We today are sealed. Until the, until the day of redemption. Those of us saints who went the way of the cross, broken of our self-righteousness, contrite, owning up, taking responsibility that we put him on the cross, and in fear of him called upon his name out of brokenness and contrition. Because why? You went over that edge. And, when, and dude, when someone disputes brokenness, contrition, Fear of the Lord and calling upon. See, calling on the greater when you have been made the lesser than dung, it's it just it's like help. But see, someone who hasn't been there, that's work. Or replace it with some kind of fleshly carnal device. But see, you go the Lord's way. And he saved you. You're sealed. Once saved, always saved today in this dispensation, which was not under the law, which is not in the time to come, except if you're one of the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure in having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from but what does Christianity do? Give you ways to excuse, justify, living up in your iniquity. Okay? 
And if, if by coincidence, which does not exist, 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They, the fake, went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. There are to, still to this day, which just baffles me, that people like to call me a follower of a certain guy from out northeast. They do that because he and I do hold similar things on doctrine, but I don't seek to justify Rome. Well, all the while pretending to speak against it. <laughs> Leave it alone. Okay? Leave it alone. Now, saints can have disagreements. That happens. That happens. Actually, verse 19. Verse 19. In Acts, in uh, chap, uh, Proverbs 18, verse 19. A brother offended. It's harder to be one than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of castle. The contentions are like the bars of castle. Acts chapter 15. You are going to see scriptural evidence and proof that saved people can have differing things on the doctrine. Still being saved, but what happens? Flesh gets involved. Acts 15, verses 36, on to verse 40. And after some days after, Paul said on the Barnabas, this is after the Jerusalem conference, where they concluded that, hey, you don't have to keep the law today to be saved and stay saved and be right with God. To the Jew first, also to the Gentile. And some days after, Paul said on the Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark, respecter of persons. Barnabas was being a respecter of persons there. But Paul thought not good to, thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You ever tried to eat a sandwich with a broken tooth? <laughs> Doesn't work really well, does it? Okay? Here's the thing. Barnabas was being a respecter of persons. He was. Barnabas, the son of consolation, I think that means. Okay? Barnabas. But, here's the thing. Barnabas was the one who sought out Paul of Tarsus and brought him to the disciples. Okay? Barnabas wanted, wanting to give Mark, his relation, his kindred, another chance. And realistically, it's like, okay, can you fault him for wanting to give someone? And he could be like, hey, Paul, hey, I, I gave you a second chance, didn't I? I, I went and got you, and, okay? But at the end of the day, Mark, Mark was proven, and you read about that in Acts 13, at that time, later on, Paul makes the mention to bring Mark with thee, for he is profitable to me and the ministry. Yes, eventually, Mark would grow up and become profitable. Yes, absolutely. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, went not with them to the work. I see both sides of the equation, but scripture is telling us something specific. 
Barnabas is a saved man. Barnabas is a saved man. He's up there in heaven waiting for us when we get up there. Yes, he is. He, he's up there with, uh, with the Lord. Yes, he is. Barnabas was a saved man. Absolutely. Amen, amen, hallelujah. But he was a respecter of persons in this. Paul was in the right. And the contention, what, 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 was, what was that? Aye, aye, aye. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed one, uh, departed asunder one from another. And they, excuse me. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed on to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Verse 40 kind of shows you who the Lord was for in that little equation. Barnabas is a saved man. He's up there in heaven. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. His heart was in the right place. Hey, he, 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 dude, he messed up. Let's give him another shot. Okay? But he was also being a respecter of persons. Because Mark was part of his kindred. Okay? Paul's like, he, he, he let us down. This is some serious work. Let him, you know, in time, Paul said, you know, bring him with thee for he is profitable to me and the ministry. So eventually Mark grew up. Okay, but at that time, it's like, no, 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 don't, no. No, the guy left us hanging. Say, like, hey, love you, buddy, but you know, you, you, you left us hanging there. I ain't going to give you another guy. Hey, brother, um, shame me once, shame on you. Shame me 400 times, shame on me. Okay? And the people, brother, that you are still going with are betraying you. Go one. I wonder why. I wonder why. Proverbs 18, verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Verses 31 on to verse 37. Matthew 12. 31 on to 37. Now, <laughs> to this day, People, the unpardonable sin thing. Um, there are people out there who want the unpardonable sin to be valid for us today in this dispensation. Why? Number one, boasting. <laughs> I'm so good, I don't ever commit the unpardonable sin. Look at me. Look at me, I've, I've, you know, eh. form of self-glorification. And also condemning people wrongly. I, I don't, you cannot commit the unpardonable sin today. That, if you don't want to hear the truth of that, there will be links for you in the description box. If you don't want to hear the truth of that, then go ahead, dip yourself into some water and go to hell. Okay? The unpardonable sin is only viable when the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is present himself physically. As he was before the death, burial, and resurrection. And as he will be during the kingdom of heaven. Because after the death, burial, and resurrection, dear Pentecostal half-twit, Peter did not respond with, you have blasphemed the whole... No. The only one in all of Scripture, 
mentions the unpardonable sin is the Lord Jesus Christ before the death, burial, and resurrection. Paul doesn't mention it. Peter doesn't mention it. James doesn't mention it. James doesn't mention it. Okay. Whoever wrote Hebrews, okay? Whoever wrote Hebrews didn't mention it. Okay? John! John didn't mention it. After the death, burial, and resurrection, of course. The only one who did was the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who mentioned it. See, if you people would rightly divide the word of truth, this wouldn't be a problem for you. But seeking to justify yourself. Wherefore, verse 31, on to verse 37. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, pay attention, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither the world to come. This world. When he was actually physically present. Because. Find for me. After the death, burial, and resurrection. Anyone who mentions the unpardonable sin. Go ahead and find it. Put it in the comment section for me. From the authorized version. God's perfect and errant. Given by inspiration word. I will not entertain you at all. If you use anything other than the scripture. So. Okay. So, when the Lord was physically present in this world, neither the world to come. The world to come. When he is physically present. He's not physically present. His body, we, the body of Christ, present. Okay? He himself physically known. During the time of Jacob's trouble, when he come back and establish the kingdom of heaven, that's when you have to worry about it. You, 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 want, you want the unpardonable sin so you can justify yourself and glorify yourself and boast yourself of how righteous and pious you are. There are other reasons, but you know, when you get right down to it, you know, and then you go about looking at Christianity, it's like, well, they're blaspheming the Holy Ghost all the time. Aren't they? Christians are, yeah. Because basically, blaspheming the Holy Ghost is attributing to the Lord something that is of Satan. <clears throat> Take the halls there, buddy. <laughs> Either make the tree good, and there is none good but God, and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is no by his fruit. Hold your place here. Go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation singular. Not plural. That is something that chafes my buttocks when I hear people say Revelation. <laughs> no, no. Look at that verse. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Either or. Either or. Revelation chapter 3. Oh, Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 16. In Revelation chapter 3. See, Purgatory is option C. Anything other than the faith that was once delivered unto the saints is another option, right? It's either or. You're either saved or lost. You're either of Christ or of the devil. But man, religion, all the religions offer another option. Boot the door. 
and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, meaning he's the creator. In the beginning God said, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The Spirit of God moved across the waters. And then God said, that's Godhead in our action. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot, neither cold, nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So because thou art lukewarm like these Christians over there, lukewarm, option C, well, maybe, eh, eh. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Translation, you make the Lord sick, he pukes. See, some atheists, self-theists out there, they're cold. I'll give them that. They're at least, some of them, it's like, I like my sin, I want my sin, I don't want your Jesus. You're cold. Hey, you're at least, you have at least, we know where you stand. Okay? All right? My enemies know where I stand. I stand on the scripture. Okay? And I know where they stand too. But see, they put off this option C. Wishy-washy, lukewarm. Being ambiguous in matters of faith. Wishy washy, lukewarm. It makes the Lord sick. Choose a side and stay there on. I, I, I will respect someone who at least has made the choice of what side they're going to stand upon. And remember, God doesn't force you to stand either or. Okay, you got to make the right choice. But if you choose to stand with the devil, hey, at least I know where you stand. But it's these guys who want the option C, the gray area. There is no gray era, area. It's either or, A or B. There is no option C. You're either saved or you're lost. Okay? Verse 34 in Matthew 12. Here's your sweet little old Jesus. Oh, generation of vipers. At that time, that is quite a insult. Calling Herod a fox as the Lord did. You tell that fox. That in this era. The insults that children. Children. Who say the F word. And you think it's cute. It's disgusting. The profanity, the insults that man comes up, that little children come up with today, taught by their lovely parents, okay, uh, would make people back, would make, bar, uh, what was that, uh, Barabbas blush, okay? <laughs> All right? But see, our Lord saying this to these people, vipers, Ye generation of vipers. A viper is a serpent. That old serpent, the devil, Satan. See, when the Lord says, Oh, generation of vipers, what is he? Really? That's a major. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, just insulted these people. Like our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was sarcastic. <laughs> Will ye go away too? Lord, where are we going to go to? Have I not chosen you twelve and one of you is a devil? See, Christianity gives you this fake sissy little teddy bear. 
<laughs> he just called the old generation of vipers. That old serpent. Viper is a serpent. Okay. How can ye, being evil, tie that together, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the hearts, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Now you got to remember too, dispensational difference. Question! Had Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture? No. It's like, Brad, you say there is none good. I don't say that. The scriptures say that. Man was accounted good under the law when they did what the law said. Hence, trying to please God. Okay? Man in himself is not good. But they were accounted as good for keeping what God said according to the law, trying to please God. Okay, that's how that works. It's not a contradiction. But I say unto you, and, and see, again, you, you devils out there, you, you guys who want to ingratiate, ingratiate yourself to a certain King James Bible believing clique, whether it be the one from out there or whatever from Florida or wherever they are, okay? But I say unto you that every idol, I-D-L-E, busybody, running the motor, but going nowhere. <laughs> these, these, these Christian live streamers with their debates. They're, they're idle. They're, they're, they're going nowhere. Just spinning the wheels and going nowhere. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. By thy words thou shalt be condemned. Verse 21 now, in Proverbs 18. Verse 21 now, in Proverbs 18. And the Pentecostal devils love this verse. Now we have read the context. Okay? We have read the context. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now we have gone through, uh, especially James, about you know those who are speaking a false gospel as opposed to we who are speaking the true gospel. Okay. Pentecostals love this verse because they will, out of context, take this and say that you are God, a God who has power to create reality with your words. That's what the secret is. That is what Joel Osteen teaches. That is what that horrific eight-foot-tall devil Tony Robin, Robbins teach and with his little boyfriend Matthew McConaughey. Okay. <laughs> I'd say that that guy's a joke okay but see they are teaching the pentecostals not all of them but the ones that you see like the creflo dollars the joyce myers the the uh ken uh not ken helvin <laughs> um uh what, what was that guy's um uh, oh the the weirdo i can't even remember his name i can't even remember his name good okay um, but, I mean, these guys, these guys who are of the Pentecostal flavor teach you, T.D. Jakes, um, uh, the guy, uh, Kenneth Hagen. I can't remember that one devil's name, and that's fine. But these guys, those types of guys come to this verse and say that you can create reality with words you speak. What is this talking about? Romans chapter 6. Well, first of all, death and life 
are in the power of the tongue. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. See these um, name it and claim it, nab it and blab it, which is essentially easy believism. Think about it. Metaphysical mind science, which uh, uh, the name it and claim it prosperity thing bases itself on. That you create things by your own doing, by your own words. The sleazy believist believes that they save themselves by what they think. It's very similar to Christian science, which of course is Christian. <laughs> it really is. Okay, so see, the easy believist and the whack job, name it and claim it people are very similar. The name it and claim it guys are all about speaking, while the sleazy believers are all about what they think they are. Romans chapter 6, verses 16 on to the close. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Who are you obeying? The Lord or yourself? I'm obeying the Lord, really. Huh? We're in the New Testament again. Which Greek are you talking about? How are, how are they made right in the Garden of Eden? <laughs> it's not funny. God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, addressing saved people, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Now some will come to this as like, well, you're not supposed to be sinning anymore. Have you ever read Romans 7? For. Uh, even the easy believists can dismantle these idiots, Christians, um, like, you know, similar to Paul Washer, Ray Comfort. You gotta stop sinning or you lose your salvation, but you can get it back. Never had it in the first place. Uh, remember, if you ever encounter someone who's saying they're a Christian, and saying you got to uh, stop sinning. Hey, hey, you lost people who might be watching this right now? Uh, mention to them, well, what about Romans 7 and Paul? About what he, uh, where is that, where is that? Um, uh, where he says in verse 15, For that which I do I allow not. Sin. For what I do, that do I not. But what I hate, sin, that do I. He doesn't want to sin. But guess what? He sins. Okay, somehow for any of these guys who talk about sinless perfection today, um, Paul missed that. <laughs> Paul missed that. Paul didn't get that part. So watch out for those people, just so you know, okay? I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. As ye have yielded your members... Servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. Members, get your mind out of the gutter, you pervert. Okay? Your hands. Your eyes. Your feet. You know, your eye offendy, fuck it out. Your hand offendy, cut it off. Your feet, cut them off, okay? It's not talking about actual literal mutilation, but get away from these things, okay? Get your mind out of the gutter, pervert, okay? For when ye were the servants of sin, see, in the Bible, put slave in there. Slave who has no choice, okay? Slaves, 
slaves. Mr. McAdoodle with his uh, LSD version of the Bible, you know, is all about, you know, slaves, slaves. No, you have a choice. You have a choice. But then again, he's a Calvinist. Okay? Like certain other people are. Yeah. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit on the holiness and the end everlasting life. Did you catch that? Verse 21 in Proverbs 18, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Sin and righteousness. For verse 23 in Romans 6. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. You know, we touched on this on Monday, but we're touching on it again. Verses 14 on verse 17. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death, Unto death. A Christian who saves themselves because they just believe. Who believe that God wrote a church building to find God. Hmm? Believe that they're special because God's a respecter of persons because they have elected them. Or, or whatever option C you adhere to. A saint. Death unto death. Preaching to you the true Christ. From the scripture. To the one we are the savor of death unto death. And to the other the savor of life unto life. Spirits identify. Admonishing each other. In the nurture of the Lord. In the word of God. Okay. And who is sufficient for these things? For we saints. Saved people are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Non-dispensational Christians, especially. You know, the sleazy believers, some of them say, say that they rightly divide the word of truth. But yet, that's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Uh, that's not rightly dividing the word of truth. See, salvation changes within the dispensation that's when you run into people who, who like that guy over there um, it's like well we're all dispensational there's an old and a new testament <laughs> bravo you're very nice how are they made right uh, in the old testament well law how are we made right today okay yes Today, in this dispensation, by grace through faith. What about in the Garden of Eden? Then you get a little bit deeper. Well, it was a lot. The law wasn't written there yet, pal. It was all works in the Garden of Eden. What, hey, 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 hey. What about during the time of Jacob's trouble? Just believe and receive. Really? Really? Uh, no, it's by faith and works. The Oh, you, you know, the ones who are uh, sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Those are, 144,000 Hebraic Jews! What, what about the kingdom of heaven? There, there, there are people out there who tell you, seriously, I'm, that it's by grace. By grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven. That, 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 that's stupid. You know, Christ is going to be on the throne. And you read uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Look, wow, we're at it. 
Well, why don't we read that while we're on this little... We, this is an inexhaustible subject, brother. You know, Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They saw God in the Garden of Eden. You're going to see God during the kingdom of heaven. And there are people out there say, well, it's by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven. Oh, my goodness. And your dispensations. Ah! Mm. Yeah. Yeah. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, which the Greek says this, the oldest and best, yeah. But as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. <coughs> Proverbs 8, verses 34 on to 36. Proverbs 8, 34 on to 36. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. The wages of sin is death. Christianity teaches lost people religious things. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll steal that from you, jerk. Sure. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Religiosity. And Christianity is a means for you to find a loophole to justify your sins. Although all they that hate me love death. And the wages of sin is death. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 5. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 1 on to verse 5. Therefore... Seeing we have this ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, as is every saint, okay, men are supposed to be doing the preaching and teaching, okay, all right, in one-on-one -on -one personal witness, yes, a woman can do that, but when it comes to especially genius, a public setting like, oh, YouTube, um, yeah, yeah, men are supposed to do the preaching and teaching. Okay? Period. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like Christians do, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are to walk according to the precepts that our Lord provides us in the scriptures rightly divided. Okay? Mainly for us today found in the Pauline epistles. Okay? The Christians are walking according to the precepts of their God, Satan. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this quailed hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. For we preach not ourselves. God loves you. Just believe and receive. You got to go to the church that Christ founded. You're elect. Uh, you've achieved oneness through emptying yourself and glorifying yourself and the way of the warrior is his boshito. For we preach not ourselves, but 
Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Okay? And 2 Peter, now see, that's us, the saints. That's what we do. Saints. Okay? We preach Christ and Him crucified. All right? Not us. We don't justify the flesh. We seek to justify the Lord. Okay? Being vessels meet for His use. But what do you know who did? Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 14 on to verse 19. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 14 on to verse 19. Wherefore, beloved. Oh, wait, wait. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 14 on to verse 19. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, tossed by every wind of doctrine, unstable as water. Mm. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass, that's a donkey, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with a tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error while they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it, eat the fruit thereof. Love life. He who loseth his life for my sake shall find it. But he who loves his life in this world will lose it. Death and life. The wages of sin is death. You get this? Hmm? Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 15. Galatians chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 15. 6 on to verse 15. Excuse me. Let him that is taught in the word Communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Look at these channels that are all about debate. Look at these idiots who all they do is attack people. All they do. All they do is cause strife. All they do is debate. You shall know them by their fruits. It's, I mean, that's all, they're all, that's all they are to it. You know? That's all they are to it. Just point the finger. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Popular opinion subscribers that they buy cult following which they don't do anything about but actually kind of like Ruckman <laughs> who in his later years before he died uh, he that man Ruckman in his older years he was loving the publicity and the notoriety that he was getting he was but he that soweth to the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, 
shall of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for a new season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't compromise. Don't be alarmed. Don't be dismayed by the trial that's going to try you when you as a saint decide to walk contrary, according to Scripture, contrary to that. Now your little Christian friends are like, what are you doing? You're too extreme. You're legalistic. No, I'm doing what the Lord says. You, you run off someplace while you watch your NBA finals or whatever, baseball or well, what's wrong with that idolatry? What's the extension? The idol is always the extension of ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So, don't, have, don't compromise. Don't compromise. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. How do you do good unto all men? Giving them the scripture. They won't hear, hear your word of the scripture by your behavior. You are an ambassador for Christ if you are a saved individual saint. Okay? How do you do, how do, you do good to your enemies? By living according to scripture and giving them the example of scripture if they will not hear your words. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But a lot of you don't want to hear the truth. So what? So what? And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh. Theater! Performance! They got the look of a certain guy. The mannerisms, the vocal inflections, even, even the physical mannerisms. Coming out of a forest like a certain... The, the copycat min mimics. Okay? They can train you, constrain you to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh, to make you twofold more the child of hell than themselves. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Uh, the cross is death. Destined to die. Destined to die. And you know what? No one like wants to die. Got a little dog in there who's going to die soon. Zena, my, my wife's little doggy. Hopefully we can get a new replacement for Zena. But, you know, nobody wants to die. But we're all going to die. And in order for the Lord to save you, you have to die to yourself. And Christianity is all about the avoidance of death, even though they claim to speak about it. But in order to go that way of the cross, there has to be a death before you can be reborn. Something old has to die. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Colossians 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 18 and 23. Colossians 2. 18 and 23. What happens? Someone will come along with what? Doing the work. And see, people who have not been broken call 
what is required of work. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Uh, easy believism is works-based salvation. You're saving yourself by your own belief. And not holding the head, is Christ, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the whale, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men. Catholics are notorious for this. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility. And neglecting of the body. Not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Looks good. What is it? And how do they pull this off? Well, look in the same chapter, verses 4 on to verse 8. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, Lord case S, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding there with thanks with abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the whale, not after Christ. Again, what brings about your changed life? I've met <laughs> many Christians who talk about change life, change life. But you know what they're not? They're not a new creature. The change is brought about by themselves. Step one, step two, step three. Are you safe, brother? And see, the brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord is a process that happens when you are truly broken of yourself. Happens... In a fell swoop. Okay? It's it's virtually, depending on how our Lord does it to you, it's, vir it, it's like a, just like that. It's utter hopelessness. You're in a sinking submarine and the water is coming at you and the only thing that's going to save you is a miracle. The death, burial, and resurrection on Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ is bloodshed on the cross and calling out in that desperation. See, people have become desperate, but yet they still hold to that vestige of, there's something good here. Now let's look at a contradiction. It's not a contradiction, but people will say this. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Let's start by looking at one verse. Verse 19. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Selah, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. Change life, change life, okay? And now, also, too, look at Proverbs 24. Have you ever run into this one, brother? Sister, you ever run into this one? Proverbs 24, verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Psalm 
55, 19 says, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Salah. Because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. But yet, in Proverbs 24, verse 21, My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. What's going on here? Well, first of all, first of all, Psalm 55, 19, let's read this again. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Shelah, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Now, let's, let's read a little context. From verse 9 on to verse 21. Okay? Let's read a little context. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Has America been made better by Christianity? <laughs> Remember, I, I stand corrected. Yeah. America is a Christian nation. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Christianity is not the faith that was once handed to, once delivered on to the saints. Okay? <laughs> okay? Hey, what's, what's made better by Christianity? <laughs> For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. Yeah, I know what side you stand on. It's like, whatever, dude. It's like, okay. You know, well, but no, I'm buddy. But see, when you get these infiltrators who try to butter you up with love bombing, and then all of a sudden, after a while, they betray you, they were never your friends, dude. They were never your friends. And, oh, I love you. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, you don't know what love is. All right? But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide and my sweet account, man, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked on to, walked on to the house of God in company. Someone, this is my friend. And after years and years and years, they betrayed me. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. First John chapter 2, verse 19. And shall we already chew our cabbage a little? Why not? I like cabbage. I like cabbage, and so is my wife. <laughs> Second Timothy 2, 19. Isn't that uh, interesting in the correlation with the numbers there? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Back to Psalm 55. Verse 15. Let death cease upon them, and let them go down quick into hell. Death, the wages of sin is death. Quick into hell, alive into hell. Now, I, I, yes, I know this is literal, yes, because, you know, I know, but we're, this is our instruction in righteousness. The wages of sin is death. Christianity is all about messing with God's word, trying to justify sin. I repackage it to you to fit the modern man. Let death seize upon them, and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. They have no changes. They have no changes. O Lord, thou, O Lord, no changes. Change will come as a result of what? Because of something you do? Or because you're made a new creature. 
And see, when the Lord saves you and seals you with Himself, boom, you're a new creature! Okay? Guess what, Jack? You don't make yourself a new creature, even though you want to. Being a new creature in Christ involves Christ in you, the hope, and gl hope of glory. Okay? That's why, that's why I'm very suspect of these guys now who throw a change like gospel. Change. Why don't you expound about what is the premise? What is the catalyst? What is the provocateur of that changed life? Then you'll be getting into something, buddy. Yo ho ho, pal! Let death seize upon them, and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Oh, Lord! Wickedness is in their dwellings. Save yourself by your own belief. Or whatever, whatever quasi little system of whatever you want to come up with. Whatever religion of the whore you want to come up with. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud. And he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. Now we have a, you know, we are small but few. And when you can get yourself a little group of brethren who will pray for you. And pray with you and you can pray for them and vice versa. Okay? God shall hear and afflict them. Even he that abideth of old, Selah, of old, abideth of old, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Ephesians 4, abideth of old, trigger word there, abideth of old, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, 20 under verse 24. 22 under verse 24. Uh, actually, <laughs> let's read um, 17 under verse 24. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. <laughs> Save yourself by your own belief. Having the understanding darkened, departing from evil, Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned, learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and have been taught by him, and by the foolishness of preaching, um, God chose, uh, wait, 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 what is that? That's in 2 Corinthians. Um, by the foolishness of preaching, uh, to save those that believe. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Hold on, hold on, we're going to get there. I don't want to botch that one, okay? 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, the foolishness of preaching. Bear with me, bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, yeah, verse 21. For after the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Okay, God will use man to preach. God in man, preaching to you the word of God and the spirits identified. Okay? All right? If so, be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. What we just read in Psalm 55, people. Come on. Look at verse 19. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. That old man. See, Again, God doesn't co coerce you. 
you have to make the choice to rightly to rightly divide the word of truth, of course, yes, but to walk according to what God says. God isn't going to force you to do what he says. Okay? That's just the bottom line. Okay? So that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. God has put himself within you. Work out the Lord in your life by your walk with him. Understand? Okay? All right. Uh, and of course, Second Corinthians chapter 5, which I uh, alluded to here quite a few times. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You have to make the choice to do what he says or... <laughs> The rudiments of the world. Huh? Philosophy of man. The, uh, philosophy, the love of man's wisdom. Yeah, God said, buddy. Romans chapter 8. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital of spirit. Christianity walks after the flesh. That's why when you bring up the truth that the flesh of Jesus Christ is sinful. But see, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. God in flesh never sinned. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified by God keeping the law perfectly. That's how that works. Nobody could do that except God. Okay? And see, the fake don't like to hear that. Like, oh, blasphemy! <laughs> and see, that shows them that, number one, what are they about? They're all about themselves, the flesh. Number two, they're lost. Haven't you, haven't you figured it out that your flesh has a mind of its own? Anyway, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. That's right there, people. And for sin condemn sin in the flesh. Oh, the precious blood of Christ. Yes, it's precious because he kept the law perfectly. Hence, because Christ kept the law perfectly and never sinned, that sinful flesh was sanctified by the Lord keeping his law perfectly. Okay, that's how that works. All right? All right. He circumcised the eighth day. Okay. He kept the law perfectly. The sinful flesh was sanctified. Okay. That's how that works. All right. For that, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Christianity. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Look here online. Okay, these Christians. Okay? For to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, is death. And the wages of sin is death. But uh, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal, fleshly mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed. 
And just to remind you, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 on to verse 48. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Look at that, lowercase s. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and after that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, as is the earthy. Such are they also that are earthly. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, every denomination, including King James Bible, even Christianity, is all earthly, especially now. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthy, and such as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So when you look at verse 19 in Psalm 55, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. You get it. Selah. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen strife, violence and strife in the city. They were pretending to be of us, but they weren't of us, man. They're, they're not a new creature. But now, okay, let's let's go to Proverbs 21 now. Or Proverbs 24, excuse me. Verse 21. Proverbs 24, verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. We, we have established what was being talked about in uh, Psalm 55, verse 19. But change. There's no changes. Not a new creature. Not of us. What about this? What about this? Hmm. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable as water. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's read verses 13 on to verse 22. My son, eat thou honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom, see how that works? Be unto thy soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a, a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times, riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Wicked, lost, fake people fall away. Just man, save people, fall seven times. Rise it up again. It's more than seven times. The point is, we get back up because thou, O Lord. The fake, me, 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 okay? And they're willing to ride any train ride. They're willing to ride any way they can to justify themselves. Given to change. Oh, couple Canadians that I've run into, a few English people I've run into, okay, Australian here and there, given to change. They're one thing one second, and then they're this thing the next, then this, then this, then this. It's a different type of change that's being addressed here. Let's continue. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. We are thankful. We say, praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgment. 
Okay? When one of these devils fall and stumble, it's not like, ha, ha, ha! No, it's like, praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgment upon the wicked. Praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgment upon the wicked. Now, ha, 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 ha! I know the righteous will laugh at the wicked. I know that. But it begins with, you're right, and we're wrong. Okay? I've seen some prominent people try to use this to justify them um, really attacking people. Okay? Well, Brad, you attack people. Yes, I do. But see, I thank the Lord for his righteous judgment when the wicked stumble or fall. Not laughing like the, my, the one guy I hate besides myself. Um, he, when he falls, you know, I'm not going to be like, ha, ha, ha. It's like, well, Lord, thank you for your judgment because you have uh, uh, brought the thing of the wicked upon their own head. Praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgments. Anyway. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no can there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Unstable as water. An unstable man. Uh, um, Oh, we just read that. Uh, Double-minded man. Double-minded. A mind on your sin, but yet seeking to justify and saying that you're a saved individual. Double-minded. You cannot serve God and mammon. There is no option C. You're either hot or you're cold. See, too many people are trying to be lukewarm. That option C. So, it's like, okay, I believe yeah, you're right about... Uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. But then they hear some idiot, easy believers, and they're just like, oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. The, uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount is a foundation doctrine for us today. A double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. What are you trying to justify? Hmm? For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knoweth the ruin of them both? These things also belong to the wise. It's not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Kind of like what Barnabas did. And whose judgment? See, the change in Psalm 55, verse 19 is reminiscent of someone who has been made a new creature for our instruction in righteousness. Did you hear that? Okay? Because the change comes about by something thou, Lord. What we are reading here, fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious against the wicked. They go from one image to another image. Revelation 19. Revelation 19, okay? Revelation 19. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king. Fear the Lord. And meddle not with them that are given to change. I've seen this in about a bunch of Christians. It's like, well, I was once a Baptist. Now I'm a Methodist. I'm a Methodist. Now I'm a Lutheran. I'm a Lutheran. Uh, now I'm a Presbyterian. Hey, I might as well go home to the church that Christ founded and be a Catholic. You were all along. Given to change. I was once, right? Like, uh, I once was dispensational, but, you know, everything blends together. It's like these guys, it's like, I once believed in the redemption of the purchased possession, but because I read Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and didn't keep reading, uh, now I believe in the post-tribulation rapture. Given the change. See, change, same word, being used in two different contexts. Remember this, brother. You will eventually run into this. I promise you. <laughs> you will be ready. 
All right. But uh, Revelation 19, verses 15 and 16. And a sharp, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, sword of the Spirit. Okay, the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, dividing asunder the uh, spirit and soul and dividing the bones and marrow. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I just brad eyes that. Okay. Our Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes back, doesn't like some pictures will show you him have a big sword knocking. No, no. The word of the Lord. Okay. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay? Proverbs 5. And you see this in so many people uh, who will go to any lengths. The Jesuit. See, it's a representation, those that are given to change, of the whoredom of the Vatican of Satan. Okay? They're this one, they're, they're an ite one second, then they get out of that and get in with another group. They get a problem with that group, and then they go to another group, and then it's like, well, I stand by myself. And it's given to change. Given to change. But yet, they don't have a change because they're not a new creature. Do you get it? Proverbs 5, 3 out of verse 6. For the lips of a strange woman, Mr. be Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Wages of sin is death. And her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable. That thou canst not know them. Movable. Unstable. My son, fear thou the Lord and King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. Well, one minute, one thing, next day they're done. I, I, I've run into quite a few people like that. Matthew chapter 12. Then we'll be done. Matthew chapter 12. Verses 31 on to verse 37. And see, this This is a dividing line. Okay? What brought about the change in your life? Was it, is it because you are a new creature, Christ in you, the hope of glory? Or because you've learned some things from devils whose ways are movable? And you, like an unstable man... Huh? Unstable as wars? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 on to verse 37. Then we'll be done. Oh, we already covered that, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. Well, let's read it again. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy... Oh, one second, one second. Matthew 23, verses 25 on to verse 24. See, like I told you, got to pay attention. Matthew 23, verses 25 on to verse 27. That will be done. Sorry about that. Like I said, you see, you got to pay attention. you got to read along. Huh. First, let's read verse 24 on to verse 28. Ye blind guides, 
whose ways are movable, who are given to change, which strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the club, cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And like I said, that's the dividing line. They look good on the outside, but where did this change come from? Hmm? Did the change in your life come from being a new creature, Christ in you, or because of something you've done? Hmm? And like Proverbs uh, 24, verse 21, given the change, you're a Methodist, you're a Lutheran, then you're a Presbyterian, a Baptist, and now you're back home Catholic. You were once a follower of this guy. Now you're a follower of this guy. Then this guy, this guy. Uh, okay, okay, I believed. I, okay, you're right. Rightly dividing the word of truth. No, 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 no. The Sermon on the Mount is for us today, doctrinally. Wishy-washy, unstable as water. Well, not with those types of people. And the people like in Psalm 55, verse 19... They have no changes. Not, their change comes about by something that they did. Not because they are a new creature. See? Why does a dog continue to return to his own vomit? Meddle not with those, uh, with those who are given to change, brethren, people. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, thank you very kindly. Please keep us in your prayers. Uh, we've got a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. Lord willing, see you in the next video.